Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the house of the Lord this morning. As we've heard previously this morning, our theme for the day is gather for sanctification of our souls. And our scripture reference is from John 17, 17. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is the truth. As we uh, come here this morning, I feel that this sanctification is probably something that we probably know less than we should about it. And it's probably one of the more important things for us to, uh, to be doing. And I pray that uh, our brother Raylan will give us some inspired insight to this, uh, to this process. I'd like to open our service with the singing of hymn 291, Higher Ground. We'll stand for this song and then I will bring an invocation, hymn 291. Sing on the upward way, new heights I made in every day, still praying as I onward come, Lord, let my feet on higher ground, Lord, let me Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of the day and the beauty of your creation this morning and the gentle breeze that uh, we feel in our backs. I would pray that uh, your Heavenly Spirit would bless us this morning, that we might learn of your ways for us, that we might learn 
how to obtain that higher ground. Be with our brother Raylan as he brings your word this morning. And be with this congregation as they offer up their prayers and their testimonies to you. We know that those words are a blessing to all of us. And again, I ask you to be with us, guide and direct this service. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. morning. That hymn was picked for a special reason. Do you really want to come to a higher ground today? Or are you satisfied where you are? As I was uh, doing some studying on sanctification, the Lord brought a couple of... uh, scriptures to my mind and uh, sanctification goes two ways it's something that we do and it is also something that God does for us I want to say uh, thank you to Alan for listening to the spirit and bringing these topics to us for this week because I believe that each one of the uh, daily themes has brought us to a higher ground to where maybe today we could really understand what we have to do to enter into the presence of God. I don't believe that there's anyone sitting out there that doesn't want to enter into the presence of God. That should be our desire. The theme for Sunday was gather with belief in truth. Monday, gather with humility of heart. Gather to praise His sovereignty. Gather to nourish the soul. And last night or yesterday, gather to gain more knowledge. I would like for us to, I hope, I hope that each one of you bring your scriptures. I don't have my me- mind memorized, so I have to bring them with me. I want to go to uh, section 43. 4D Sanctify yourselves and ye shall be endowed with power that ye may give even as I have spoken something that we must do sanctify ourselves Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians. Six, seventeen, and 18. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate with the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Almighty. So it's something that we must do. We must come out of the world. And that's pretty easy to say, I'm just going to shut off the TV. I'm not going to go to the football game. You know, you know, the Lord knows every need that we have. 
and every desire that we have. It's okay to watch TV once in a while as long as you're watching the right things. It's okay to go to the ball game as long as your conduct is showing the love of Jesus Christ. It's not that he wants us not to have fun in this world and not to do anything. I'm just, you know, my, my uh, son, my youngest son, told me here a while back, he says, Dad, you're boring. I said, son, I don't think so. I think I'm having a great time. God is good. When we put Him first in our life, the blessings are never-ending. I just want to share a, a testimony with you. I grew up in the Independence area. I grew up in the church. I was baptized at eight. And I remember my baptism. I am uh, November 28th is my birthday, so I was that next Sunday in December. And it was very cold. And the church that we went to um, had a baptismal font, but you had to walk outside around to come in the other side. And it was cold out there. And I, I remember that day. When I was uh, 20, I received my patriarchal blessing. And up to this point in time, I grew up in the church. Uh, we're together to Zion. I knew all those scriptures. I lived in Zion. I had no desire to leave. And in my patriarchal blessing, the Lord said, I have a work for you somewhere else. And if you will follow me, I will bless you. Well, it turned out uh, just uh, about a year later, I was married to my first wife. And we drove, uh, we went, we moved 500 miles from, or 350 miles from home. Lived in our car for a little while, got a job. For 21 years, I followed the Lord. He moved me around to certain different places. I stayed with the same company that I worked with for several years. But he moved me around to different places. And then one day, 21 years later, I was thanking him for all the blessings that he blessed me with. I have four children. We have a nice home. We have, uh, I own five businesses. I had 60-some employees. The Lord blessed me so much. I said, is, is this all? These things really don't mean anything to me. I mean, worldly things. And one day I was walking down the road and I was talking to the Lord. And I talked to him just like I'm talking to you. I hope you do too because he's your friend. And I said, Lord, isn't there more? And I heard an audible voice. And he called me by my name and said, Raylan, it's time for you to go home. Well, there was no doubt where I was going home to. Within 30 days, I sold four businesses. We had our house on the market and we moved down, bought a little farm, moved down here to Adrian. I'm telling you, if you follow the Lord and listen to his voice and do what he asks you to do, the blessings are unimaginable. So I listened. Maybe I didn't always follow, but I did follow, and he blessed me. The sanctification that we're talking about is something that we have to do. We have to rid our lives of certain things. We have to come out of the world and follow the Lord. I want to read a scripture in Leviticus. The 20th chapter, verse 7 and 8. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. For I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statues and do them. I am the Lord which sanctifieth you. 
So when we follow the Lord and, and, and his directions and the scriptures, uh, you know, Jesus says, follow the scriptures and my commandments. You know, you when you when you first hear that, just follow my commandments. That's all you got to do. Well, it's not quite that easy. It's something you have to think about. It's something you have to do. It's it's something that you create your life around, and you are you have to make decisions. You have to consciously make a decision, and when you do that then the Lord will sanctify you. I looked up the definition of sanctification. And it depends on where you look. It might vary a little bit different. Set apart by truth. The action or process of being freed from sin. If we want to be freed from sin, we have to come out of the world. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot out. It doesn't work that way. Purification. So God is the one who does the purification. But it's up to us to make the decision to put him first in our life. The hymn, the uh, song that we just sang, the second one over here, if you don't know that, the words are a little bit different. I'm sure everyone knew the, the tune, but the words are a little bit different. And I think this is in the purple book. If you have the purple hymn book, it's 358. But in this hymn, the Lord's calling us to sanctify us, to come out of the world. We have to do something, and then he will do something in return. I want you to know that Lisa spends a lot of time thinking about these hymns and the, and the, for the choir. And she brought that hymn, and I remember she was real excited. She says, this one has to be sanctification. This one we have to do. She spends a lot of time thinking about those things and praying about it. So each day's theme is what the choir sings about. And I don't know if you noticed that, but but that's part of sanctification is to bring us together as one. In Mosiah chapter 2. We've, we've heard these scriptures several times already. Mosiah 2, 8 through 17. Believe in God. Believe that He is and that He is the creator of all things both in heaven and earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and power, all power, both in heaven and earth. Believe that man does not comprehend all things which the Lord can comprehend. And believe that you must repent of your sins and forsake them and humble yourselves before God and ask in sincerity of heart that he would forgive you. We are all sinners. There's not a day goes by that I don't see a sin in my life. 
And I have asked the Lord to show me those things reluctantly. I want to know, but I really don't want to know. But I already know that's the problem. I already know what it is that I need to change in my life. Sanctification is something we do, and we must do it before God can sanctify us. He's not going to take our agency away. So he asks us to love him. Now I think all of us can say, yeah, I love God. In Moroni chapter 10, we all know this scripture, but I want to read it again. Verse 30. And again, now I want to start with 29. Come to Christ and be perfected in him and deny yourselves of all ungodliness and if you shall deny yourself of all ungodliness and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you. We have to do something. That by his grace you may be perfect in Christ. And if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ you can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if you, by the grace of God, are perfect in Christ and deny not the power, then are you sanctified in Christ by the grace of God. In our priesthood meeting this morning, and I'm going to try to get this right, it was mentioned that purification is a aligning of our heart, our mind, and our desire to be the same. Our heart, our mind, and our desires. If all three of those things line up and we are focusing on God, that's when we can be sanctified. God will help us sanctify ourselves. He wants a righteous people. He wants us to choose him. And this week we have come willingly. My desire this week is that we are fed by the Holy Spirit that it will fill you completely so you will have no doubt what your purpose is when you leave this place. Time is coming short. We can see it in the world. I'm going to share a testimony, and some of you have heard it. But I think it's real important. In 2013, that's been 10 years ago, I had a vision, and I saw the destruction coming on this land. And people, it's worse than what you can even imagine. But the first thing the Lord said to me was, face it. I will protect you. The second thing he said, there's nothing earthly you can do to prepare for what's coming. You must prepare yourself spiritually. And that's what we're here this week for, is to come to a higher ground so that we can have this personal relationship with God. Because that's what he wants. He wants a personal relationship with you. 
And when you give him all, you will have that personal relationship. And when the destruction comes and when the things change in this world, you're not going to be frightened. You're going to be standing strong. And you're going to be the light that the world sees. This is a dark world. I have four children and seven grandchildren. And none of them come to church. Our two grandchildren were here last year. They were baptized. But some things in our family prevented them from coming this, this year. I want them to see the desire that their dad and their grandfather has for them to come out of the world and have joy in their heart. To find the joy that I find in serving the Lord. And I know there are many suffering. But it's up to us, the elect, to be the light so the lost will be able to find their way back. God will sanctify a people. A people that will serve him. And do his will. Zion will be. Will we be a part of it? Will we listen to the enticings of the Lord? Will we follow those directions? Will we be his light? in this world, and that is up to you. Satan is real, and he is dark. And he's fighting against God. And he is amongst our people trying to deter us, trying to change our minds, trying to change our hearts, trying to discourage us from doing what is right. The closer you are to God, the farther you are away from Satan. The Lord wants you to know that he is pleased with your efforts this week. He's pleased with your desires to learn and to come to a higher ground. And he will bless you accordingly. He will go with you from this place. He will protect you if you will look towards him. He'll give you strength, guidance, and protection. Look towards him. Lift up your eyes and look. Because God is in our midst. And we can't see him if we're always looking down. Thank you, Raylan. As we prepare for a, a prayer and testimony, I ask you to share as you feel led. Those prayers mean a lot to us, and I'm sure our Heavenly Father receives them with great joy. As a hymn of preparation, I've chosen hymn 127 in the garden. Hymn 127 will remain 
seated for this. first to lift up their voice to their God. <clears throat> I want to share a, an experience. Um, I think all of us have the feeling that if we could have controlled the way our lives went, we certainly wouldn't have chosen the things that happened to us. We would have liked it to be nicer and more pleasant. And I certainly felt that way. Um, I felt like I trusted the Lord, and yet my life was difficult. And I thought, I don't understand why I have to go through all this, because you know I love you, Lord. But I do think that it's like what we were singing in the hymn where it speaks of out of our stony grief we raise Bethel, the house of God. And I feel that all of us who have been through those difficulties have lived long enough to discover that they actually accomplish something in us. I want to just uh, mention a brief testimony I heard of a woman who was a medical missionary to some place like um, the Philippines, or I don't know where, but she was captured by um, some band. And in the course of that time, uh, she was raped. And this is not a young woman. This is a single lady who was a medical missionary. And so she was um, asking the Lord why he let that happen to her and probably finding a little bit of fault there, like, gee, Lord, I trusted you. How come, how come you let that happen? And so in that moment of quiet, while she's basically complaining, 
And the Holy Spirit said to her, or Jesus said to her, am I worth it? And she had to say yes. And I feel like if you look at the trials and the sufferings of your life, and the Lord were to speak to you and say, is that what it took for you to find me? In my case, it would have been yes, because I was got an idea, you know, that I was this very care, capable person, college degree, high grades, lots of potential, and then married and found myself in the bottom of a well for a long, long time. And not thinking that I deserved that, thinking, Lord, how come? And if I ask myself that question that, the lady asked the Lord, and he said, am I worth it? The answer would be yes, because I guarantee you, if I could have done it my way, it would have been a nicer path, and probably I would have had a lot of little prizes from the world over a period of time. But as it turned out, I got the Lord instead, and it's made all the difference. So I just want to offer a prayer of thanksgiving that through our trials, we raise Bethel, the house of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the beauty of Jesus, for his grace, for his absolute exquisite perfection as a human being. And I'm grateful, Lord, that we, your children, can follow him, can look to him, can lay our lives before him and say, let me be a member of your family, Lord. I love you. I want to be led by you. I want the future that you have planned for me. And so, Father, I thank you for this group of people. I thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, I thank you for the future that you have planned for us. And I just praise your holy name in the spirit and the grace and the love of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Last night, um, I prayed that I would not wake up and that my knee would feel better because I had fallen twice and it really hurt, and I I prayed that, but there was a simple little part I added to my nighttime prayer, and I said, if it is thy will, let it be done, and when I woke up, my de knee didn't hurt as much as it did, and I slept the whole night and didn't wake up. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the reunion and for the place that we can gather together and worship you. Please help um, please help everyone who's hurt or sick feel better in Jesus Christ's name amen. When when I was running back to our cabin, I fell and I prayed in my heart that my hands and knee, knees would feel better. And, and my hands and knees did feel better. So I've lost a uh, a lot of people in my life, like my grandpa, one of my little brothers, and 
my cat. But whenever I'm with the people that they love, whenever I'm at the places that they've been, I feel their love in my heart. Thank you. I was blessed to be, see you be a perfect gentleman and uh, put the patience to stand and wait. Thank you. Go ahead, Jane. Well, I'm totally out of my comfort zone. It's... Um, I just have to share a little bit about oil. Um, it's been about 145 days since I've lost him, and I count every day that I survive with some joy as a blessing. And um, anyway, I just um, want to tell you about a couple different things that I, the Lord gave me as little gifts to comfort me during that time. For three months, you know, drove back and forth to the hospitals and the Madonna Center to be with him. And um, I knew he wasn't going to get any better. I knew he was never going to be able to walk again. And um, he knew it, too. But he, he asked me once, can you just let me go, Jane? I said, no, I can't. I just can't. And he never brought it up again, but um, he finally... Towards the end there, he said, I just want to go home. And I said, okay, I'll take you home. So um, the last two weeks, I was able to bring him home. Hospice came in, brought him a hospital bed, a lift, all this equipment. And he never could get out of bed after he got there. And it was the most wonderful two weeks of our married life. <laughs> I cried a lot, we shared a lot, but um, it was so beautiful. Just, I loved it when I woke up at night and it was just me and him and I just sit and watch him breathe and uh, pray and cry. And one night I was just trying to be very quiet and uh, I said, I just barely whispered, I love you. He heard me and told me he loved me too, and that was the last time I heard him talk. And so I went, the next day I just sat and read him scriptures because he always his testimony was when he was little, his grandmother always read him scriptures. So I said, Royal, I don't know what scriptures your grandma read you, but um, I'm pretty sure it's probably just from the New Testament. So I read scriptures to him. But, it was just absolutely wonderful. And um, um, so then when he did die that Saturday, all the kids came, grandkids came. and He loved it when the family came. And I knew he couldn't respond to any of us, but I knew he was just absolutely loving. You know, the great grandkids were there and the grandchildren and, Kayla, our special little nurse from heaven, granddaughter. It was beautiful. And um, so when he did pass away that day, um, you know, you have to call hospice. You can't call the funeral home yet. You have to call hospice. And they had to come from Council Bless. So um, when he died, I just sat, held his hand, and held his hand, and I sobbed. It took about an hour and a half for hospice to get there, but I was just so glad I had the time. And I don't know if I was crying so much for myself, but I was just so happy for him that he was free. He was in, with Jesus, and he was going to still be able to do the ministry that he loved to do. And um, I was just happy and sad all at one time. And so then when we... My final gift that I did get was at the, when we first went to go see Royal at the funeral home. The kids let me go in first, and oh, he looked so handsome and so young and so healthy. I went in and just looked at him. I just smiled. And I know people think I might be crazy, but he smiled back at me. Just had this little smile he would give me, and he gave me that smile, and I'm so appreciative of that. And I'm so appreciative of Lisa Leader sharing her testimony with me the other day about his smile, too. 
But I just have to thank all of my congregation and my people, everybody that knew Royal. Thank you for your prayers you have, and for our family. You have just meant the world to me and lifted us up. But Lisa, I pray for you every day, and I pray for a healing. But sometimes, I don't know, I just pray for that. I love you guys. I love this congregation. I love our reunion. I, I just never gonna miss it until I can't walk anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. <clears throat> Once we were going on a bike ride and Claire popped a tire on her bike and we got home, and and Dad said that Claire had to have my bike, and Dad looked for a new new bike in the garage, but he found one, but it had a flat tire, and I prayed, and then and it needed a new tire, and then Daddy looked in the shed, and we found me a bike. I want to share a testimony about uh, um, attempts for Han and I trying to sanctify our our spiritual walk with God. I'm going to start with a, a previous testimony. You kind of understand a little bit. When I was younger, um, I don't know. It was Christmas time. It was uh, Christmas Eve, and we were all sleeping in a, in you know in our rooms, getting ready for bed. We were all getting ready to go to sleep, kind of thing, and um, heard this running up and down the hallway and uh, didn't know what it was. The next morning, um, we all were asking each other, you know, what did you guys, did you guys hear any running up and down the hallway? And uh, everyone heard it. And I know it was, I know it's the prayers of my mother and, and, uh, and love of God, but we were letting on that uh, it was angels running out the evil to try and disrupt the family. And so I, I tell you that because when we, uh, when we moved to Kearney and uh, we, we like to just to have a little bit of downtime, we like to watch um, movies and we like sports, we love sports, and we're also avid readers. And so anyway, we were in our, in our new home and I kept hearing these footsteps upstairs. I go up and I check for them. There's nothing up there. There's nothing up there. I don't see anything. Let's go. This went on and on and on. And uh, I don't remember what what precipitated it, but you know we felt like we needed to, we needed to change some things, and uh, that we needed to make our home a Zionic home as best we as best we could. And so, um, you know we. Decided that we were going to stop watching TV. We stopped watching TV. We stopped watching movies. Um, stopped watching games. And that we needed to re remove those things um, from our lives. Not only from our lives, but from our home. So we stopped watching um, the movies and, and the games and stuff. And, uh, and then books. I mean, we've, our, our library is very large. And I, we really like books. And we... Uh, Decided to get rid of all of them, and so went through all of our all of our books to determine if it aligned with God or not. And when we we determined which ones did and which ones didn't, to to keep from the through all of this, there there was like, well, what if you want to go back and read them, or what if you want to go watch them? There's there's that doubt, like, well, what if you know? Because are you sure this is the right thing to do? And so, anyway, we went through all the books, and after we got this large pile of books, to keep from uh, praying them back in, I took them out and I burned them all. Burned all the books. And with the movies, I mean, movies are, in my head, I think in numbers a lot, movies are $20 a pop most of the time and stuff like that. I was like, what about, you know, if you have to replace these or anything like that, I'm like, I need to get rid of them. And so we piled them up in the trash bag and threw them all out. 
And, and since, since the time that we've, we've done those things, our spiritual life has, has improved greatly and our, our, uh, our walk with God has increased because we've tried to make our home one that is in, 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 inducive to, to the Spirit. What We can't control what, what the world does and what we see in the world but we can't control what's in our own home. And if we want if we want a God in our home, this is how we looked at it. If we want God in our home, we have to make it to where God can reside. And so when we, we removed all those things, I haven't heard any footsteps lately. And and, and God has blessed us as we as we've tried to to come closer to him because that's that's his desire is that he wants us to put good in our life. We can't put we can't feed ourselves with worldly things and get godly things out. We have to feed ourselves with godly things to get godly things out. And so that's that's our testimony of, of the sanctification of the blessings that, that God can do for us if we if we desire to, to serve him and, and actually take action to put those things in our homes and in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us have rain yesterday, and thank you for the wind that blew yesterday. Please help anybody who's sick to feel better, and let everybody have a good rest of reunion. And thank you for this, this the sun, and in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for that prayer, sister. I need a little more prayer this morning. I just wanted to share a little bit because <clears throat> I have to. <laughs> and I'm trying to be succinct. It's not one of my strong points. I like to talk. But I think that's a blessing if I use it the right way. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much, everyone, for making me feel so loved. <laughs> It's some, one thing to know it in your head. It's another thing to feel it. So I thank you so much because I really felt it this week. And I know in my head, I know I'm loved. But when you're going through something like I'm going through at the end of the day, you're the only one who's actually going through it. And it's real easy to, to feel lonely because nobody's feeling really what you're feeling. And it's it's hard as much as they try to commiserate or to, you know, feel what you're feeling that can't. So it's something that I struggle with a little bit, feeling alone. And, uh, but thank you this so much for all that everyone has done. I, I really have felt loved and, and have felt loved by my Heavenly Father this week too. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about what I experienced. And just real quick, for anybody who doesn't know, I think everybody knows all the details, but I have stage four metastatic breast cancer. I had, was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, did all the stuff, chemo, mastectomy, radiation, took the medication faithfully for years that was supposed to keep it from coming back, and it didn't. It came back. And I have cancer from my hips up through my spine, my neck, my skull, and the worst thing that's happened is I now have an inoperable tumor in my brain that affects my vision, it affects my balance, I have numbness in my hands and feet. Um, and so every day I'm reminded, I, I thank God I don't have a lot of pain right now because of it being in my bones, that's being contained. And um, treatment is only to buy time and to make me comfortable. They do not talk about a cure. It's a disease you manage until you don't manage it anymore. And uh, which is kind of a depressing thing to carry around, you know. But God is in control, and this week, um, and you know how much music means to me? It's a gift I've been given, and it's one of the things I have to share. And there might be other things, too, and I wasn't going to cry, but now, well, Debbie, I feel you. I know I struggle sometimes, too, and it's worse now than it used to be, but um, it's a gift that I've been given to share. And uh, singing out here in the elements has always been a challenge. Reunion has always been a challenge, and especially for me because I do a lot. And I love to sing. And so, you know, hymn service and 
regular service and choir and children's choir, and I'm just singing a lot more than I do in my regular life anymore. And so when I come to, because I'm not teaching anymore, I used to teach music, and so my voice has gotten a little bit weak. Uh, you know, it's muscles, and if you don't use them all the time. So I come out here, and all of a sudden, I'm doing the Olympics vocally. And um, so usually by the end of the week, my voice is starting to show a lot. But uh, this week, Monday, my voice was gone. After Sunday, my voice was gone on Monday, and I was planning, had planned for myself early in the week to give Ministry of Music. You can do that when you're music director. You know when your voice is going to still be good, and usually the, end, the beginning of the week it is. But my voice was gone, and I was devastated because I wasn't going to be able to share. And my first thought was, and I've struggled a lot with, am I being chastised? Am I, is there something I have done wrong? And that's not God. That's Satan. That when that comes into my mind, God does, it, you know, this is not, not at this time are we being punished in this life. I think that if we, you know, make mistakes, there may be natural consequences. God allows those, but he's not punishing us for anything. That's not the way he rolls. He's a God of love. But he allows things, just like he allowed the things that happened to Job. He allows things, and there's a reason for it. And this has happened one other time in my life when I thought things were going really good, and it was when Rayland and I were dating, <clears throat> and we know that God brought us together, and he brought us together for a purpose. But at one point before we were married, there was a miscommunication that looked like it was everything was off. And I was devastated, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, I thought you were bringing us together. What's going on? But I submitted. And at that point, I said to him, Lord, if you don't want me to marry this man after all, just let me learn to be happy. Show me how to be happy by myself. And as soon as I submitted, everything was cleared up, and, well, you see the rest of the story. Same thing with Monday. Satan worked on me. Folks, I cried through the evening service nonstop. And it was negative, 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 negative. And that was Satan. If you don't think he can be here, he can. This is still the earth. And he can be here. And he was on me. And, you know, Brother Randy was teaching about humility and Satan. So and you're not humble enough and you don't deserve anything and this is all happening because blah, 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 blah. it was all evil. And I went back and I said, Lord, you know, thy will be done. If you don't want me to sing, even though in my mind it would be the first time in 20 years I haven't given a ministry of music at reunion, that's not my plan. That, I don't get to call that. That's God's will. And as soon as I submitted and I said, Lord, if, if you don't want me to sing, then maybe there's somebody else that needs to offer ministry music. It's okay. It's okay if I don't do a ministry of music this year. Thy will be done. And with that submission <laughs> and resting my voice, because I did what I knew to do, voice came back. And it was God's will for me to sing that song for you last night and to present that. And I praise and thank him for that. But the lesson is submission. And I still have the biggest hurdle before me is being willing to accept what's happening to me and whatever the outcome may be. Because at the end of the day, it's really, it is good for me no matter what. Right, Jane? It was good for Royal. And so I know that no matter what the Lord has planned, for me, I can't really lose anyway. I do need strength to endure, so I appreciate your love. I appreciate your continuing prayers, because every day I'm reminded that I'm not okay, and, and it's hard to just carry on and pretend that you are. But I'm thankful for every day that I can. And so um, I just wanted to share that with you, that idea of submission. I think that's huge in becoming sanctified. That's why I wanted to share that with you today, because until we submit and are willing to accept whatever the Lord's plan is, 
we can't move forward until we're willing to accept that. And I think that was a big lesson for me this week, and I really wanted to share that with you. I'd like to offer a prayer, please. Almighty God, thou who art all-powerful, with no end, alpha and omega, sovereign, God above all, creator of all, most kind, loving, merciful Father in heaven. Oh God, we praise your name and we thank you for the multitudes of blessings you bestow for this opportunity to come and gather. We just continue to pray, oh God, that your spirit would be here and that we would be blessed and nurtured. Have mercy on us, oh God, for our weaknesses and for those moments that we put ourselves in charge. Help us, O oh God, to submit to thy will. And we know that if we will, you will bless us and you will guide us and direct us and protect us. Help us always, Lord, to be focused upon you, that we might become your sanctified people, that we might truly be separate and be different in a very, very good and positive way that others might see. And may all praise and glory and honor be thine forever and ever. May thy kingdom come and thy will be done in our lives and on this earth as it is in heaven. May glory and honor and praise be thine in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please help everybody who's sick or hurt feel better. And please help everybody else feel better. In Jesus' name, amen. If you notice there, her words were help everybody else. And Lisa... I've got my notes from Raylan's message this morning, and one of his is put God first. Right below that, submit. Well, I wanted to share a testimony this morning, um, just a, a, a short one, but I wanted to share a couple of scriptures first. And uh, the first one is, is from the first first Peter chapter three verse fifteen and probably be shared again later, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer with meekness and fear to every man that asks of you the reason for the hope that is in you. And then Matthew six twenty one for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And then in Proverbs 23, or 4.23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And I share those scriptures, and, and most of you know that I, I uh, deliver packages for UPS. And uh, there's a, a family on my route that uh, they're, a, they're a Mennonite family and very humble people and, and very nice and they have lots of, of children. And there's this little guy, he's about like this tall, but he's this mature, <laughs> but he's about this tall. And he, he'd come out and, and he'd always be first out there. One, one night I was delivering this last winter and I got the packages and I, I went to step backwards out and kind of stepped on him a little bit. And he <laughs> moved to one side, he's tough. <laughs> he moved to one side. And he just looks up and smiles, and I go, "Oh, I'm sorry." And and uh, and uh, he likes to get the packages and bring them in. Another time, um, he uh, he was standing there looking up at me, and and just such a humble, sweet face. And he had a tractor in his hand, and he said, "I can't carry a package today." <laughs> and I said, "Would you like me to carry your tractor, and and then you can carry the package?" And he just kind of got this grin on his face, like, like no thanks. <laughs> but but it, he was thinking, that's an idea, though. <laughs> thanks for the idea. But I share these scriptures, and, and uh, Chris had shared this morning in the priesthood prayer service, and that sparked um, my, my thoughts. 
that uh, this this little boy was having a conversation with his mom, and and his mom, uh, they they know us from deliveries, and then that's where that's a kennel that they run where we take our little dog sometimes. And so she has Kathy's number, and she sent Kathy a text message one day, and and uh, I, she didn't say what the conversation was, but her little boy said. I think God looks like the UPS man. <laughs> and and uh, I talk about being humbled. <laughs> I got a lot of a lot to live up to it. And and but these little eyes are watching us and I shared this scripture this morning because we really as for you little children, you really need to guard your hearts cuz out of it come the issues of life. And uh but especially for us adults and parents, we have to guard our hearts and we have to think about what is the treasure in our hearts? Is it Christ? When, when that scripture says, and I have it noted in my, in my uh, scriptures, when it says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, I have a side note, put God first in your heart. That's, that's that sanctification. And if we're not sanctified as parents, how do we expect our children to be raised up with hearts that are drawn out to God and that are seeking God? And I appreciate that family and, and how they, how they uh, are working with their children, as well as many of you and how you're working with your children. And we need to remember to continue in that because God is... A mighty God and it's not about this generation there's many generations that he's concerned about and so we need to be concerned about the next generation that is raising up each generation can become more pure in heart I had something to share yesterday but I didn't take the opportunity and and it kind of left me and now the Lord's placed something else on my heart and I feel like I really need to um, I feel like all the testimonies before are kind of leading up to this and um, sorry I'm really nervous nobody ever talks about this stuff in, in church and in testimonies and um, so I'm hesitant but I also feel like it's really important um, when it, when we think about sanctifying it and submitting our lives to God. Um, a, a struggle that I've had my whole way, my whole life is being overweight. And um, I have, I've been on both sides of the, uh, the coin or whatever, uh, um, where I was addicted to food and, and just ate whatever I wanted to. And um, that's how I dealt with everything in my life, the stress and, and everything. And then I've been on the other side where all I did was focus on good things to eat, the healthy things, the most, the, the best things, you know, that, um, my point is that I've been on both sides, and I feel like that the Lord is showing me that both of those are wrong, because he is not first, it's been food, and I feel like all of us in our lives have something that we can grasp onto and latch onto that is not God, and for some people it's, it's entertainment, for some people, it's addictions to drugs and other things like that. You guys all know what they are in your personal life. And this has been one of my struggles. And um, I, I'm having to learn to lay those down. And, you know, I've, I've been through diets and whatever. And they might have helped temporarily with the physical aspect of things. But it didn't help spiritually. And I feel like God has been working on my heart so much to put him first. And that it's no longer about the food, it's no longer about what I look like, it's no longer about all of those other things that are not important. He is important. And he's showing me this. And I've enjoyed reunion so much because for the first time in my life, it's not about food. I'm enjoying visiting with people and talking to people and taking care of my family. And I'm not hung up in my head and addicted to food. And it's a very personal thing to share. But I feel like it's necessary. 
Because I know I'm not the only one that's ever had this struggle. And it might not be food for you, but it might be something else. So I know, I know how much God wants us to submit every area of our lives. Even if you think it might not be a spiritual issue, it probably is. Because Satan wants us, but God wants us more. We've got to go to God. And we've got to lean on him and depend on him for every little thing. And I just knew I had to share I would just uh, like to personally share a testimony. As I was sitting up here for the morning worship, uh, the Lord brought back this testimony to me. And I had a dream one night, and I was walking on a path. And it was a dirt path, and there's other people walking with me. And as you're walking on this path, there's many other paths that just veer off of it. And at any time, you could choose to walk off that path. And the Lord took me off that path, the straight path, and he took me down another path, and I stopped. I only stepped in a few feet, and there was many a path ahead of me. And as I looked around, he directed me, and I went left. And I started walking down this path, and I noticed there's a river down there. I'm like, oh, yeah, I like rivers. So, so we started walking. I just started walking down that way, not even paying attention really what was going on around me, except for it was a dirt path. But when I realized when I got down to the river, the Lord showed me how filthy it was and how bad it was. And then he had me look up. And if I he saw a bridge it was way above me, and all those people that were walking, that I was walking with before, were walking on that bridge. And he let me know that that was the higher ground that we needed to be walking on. And when I was down there, he let me know what my real desire of my heart should be, and that is to be on that higher ground. So as I turned around, not realizing as I walked down, he showed me everything that I walked by, what I walked over, and how steep the hill was that was to walk back to the straight and narrow path. There was all kinds of rocks and logs and everything on the way up that I had to try to maneuver my way back to get to that path. And we all think this hill is kind of steep walking up to the sanctuary. There's nothing compared to how easy it was to walk down the path to see how big the hill was to get back up to the straight and narrow path. And the Lord made me realize that in our walk, in our straight and narrow walk that we're on, that's real easy to step off. And when we step off, that is us wanting to follow our worldly desires and the things that we like in the world. And when we step off, we have many avenues that we can choose to take. It could be movies, it could be fishing, it could be hunting, be anything that we like in our hearts that we want. And we have a choice at that time. We can decide to follow our desires or we can choose to step back on the path and follow Christ. We did realize that he showed me when we hit the rock bottom that you will finally realize what your true desire of your heart is, and that is to follow Christ. But as you walk that path in the world, you didn't realize how hard it was going to get back. So I think the Lord is showing that we need to be very strong and keep our mind upon Christ and not to walk off the path. To remember to put him first in our lives. And when he's first, we'll always stay on that straight and narrow path. I really appreciate my sister's testimony. We all need to confess our weaknesses. We all need to share. Well, this is the safest group in the world to share with. This is a person of people that is quicker with a prayer than a judgment, I would hope. And when we get there and we start doing this in our congregations, and we start to build our relationships with our, our church family like that, to bear all, the closer we are to Zion. And I'd like to offer a prayer, please. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for our trials. Thank you for the things that we have to go through that are hard for us. 
Thank you for teaching us to submit to your will. Help us to trust in you in all things. Help us to be as a child in that trust and the knowledge that you have a perfect will for us and a perfect plan and it's grander than anything we could ever imagine. Lord God, please forgive me. There's so many things that you know about me that are flawed and sinful. But God, I so want to serve you. So want to be a blessing to people and be a testimony of Jesus and your love for us. Lord God, I pray for your spirit to just rest with us this week, for your angels to be with us and to walk with us, for our priesthood to have the inspiration and the words that you would give to them, for the people to react in a godly way, the way you would have us to do. I pray that we could come closer to you and closer to building your kingdom on this earth. I love you so. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd ask that uh, no others stand. We're quickly running out of time. Go ahead, Lena. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I hope you bless this class that we're just about to have. will go well. I hope you bless the rest of the day that we'll have fun. Yeah. I hope you bless the cooks. We'll bless us with a meal that will strengthen us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. From rather late Raylan's sermon this morning, there were several points that I think we need to write in our hearts. Come out of the world, listen to the Lord, put God first. Submit to God's will. Bring us together as one. Align our heart, our mind, and our desires to God. We'll close with him. 404, my Jesus, I love thee. And... Brother John will bring the benediction. M404, please stand.
most loving and kind Heavenly Father, we must give you so much thanks for all your blessings of even this day. You've been so kind and gracious to us this week and even this day, Father. And because of that, we just want to give you all thanks, as always. So we are so grateful for that love you have for us. And Father, we just ask that you would allow your spirit to continue to go forth and be with the classes that are ahead. That you might continue to enlighten our minds that you have done so far this morning. That you might continue to unfold your will to us, Father. That we might listen and we might do that will, Father. That you might grant it upon our hearts and our minds. That we might not forget it, but that we might continue to go forth and to share it amongst our our own congregations, Father. So thank you so much for caring so much for us and loving us so much as much as you do. May you continue to walk with us. May you continue to always guide us. May you always lift us up and strengthen us so we could ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.